we live? It's a new day, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. We don't have a snowmobile in tow. In fact, we have nothing in tow right now. We're not ice fishing, but we are going to pick up a boat so that we can go fishing. It's a very exciting day. I'm jacked up. Mitchell's filming right now in the passenger seat. It's kind of going to be a multi-day video, I think. Picking up a boat today. Tomorrow, we put a boat in the water and catch some fish. At least that's the plan. So I'm excited. Biggest, baddest boat on the market. We didn't cut any corners on this one. I'm excited and soon we'll be there uh, to the boat center. We'll show you guys what's going on. I'm jacked up. I basically have been sitting at home for a week now and I'm going so restless that I need something to do. And if this boat wasn't available to pick up sometime today or tomorrow, I'd be, I don't even know what I'd do with myself. So we're in a good mood, stay tuned. The 2024 rig and I'm excited about it. This is probably not what you guys were thinking it was gonna be, right? I'm super excited about this for a couple of reasons. Number one, gonna to get to do a lot of different cool stuff that you guys have not seen before that we haven't done before in this boat. Number two, I wanted to show kind of the little bit different side of fishing, right? We spend every day riding around in a big fancy warrior boat, which we absolutely love. Still the king of all boats, but um, kind of wanted to show something a little bit simpler. And this XL Jumbo is gonna give us that opportunity. Mitch absolutely fell in love with this thing the second he saw it, but uh, we'll kind of take you guys through it. So we're at the boat center down here in Chippewa Falls, obviously, and this is where I've gotten uh, my Warrior last year, and now this boat. They do the absolute best job of rigging. Now, in a Jumbo like this, maybe not set up super good for rigging. Right over here, this is the council, right? This is where we got the electronics set up. Couple of hummingbirds, put the live on here. Obviously, I'm not going anywhere without that. But look how clean and awesome all this rigging is, even on a very simple boat. Very rigid graph mounts on there. These graphs aren't going anywhere. Everything's right in your face. I trust these guys to kind of do whatever that they think's best in this kind of, a, really in any setup, but especially in something like this. So super cool little boat. I mean, there's not like as much to talk about on this. We're gonna kind of let the videos do a lot more talking, but for a John boat, one thing you don't see a lot is a ton of like storage options. Big live well in the back. This is truly, Oh, kind of a multi-species, multi-purpose, hunting, fishing, trudging around on little tiny lakes type of boat. Here you have a rod locker slash gun box over here. Built-in fuel tank, which is gonna be super awesome. So there's nothing I hate more than like messing around with jerry cans and stuff like that in a boat. And up here on, on the front deck, we got a ton of room up here as well with the trusty Minn Kota up here as well. So very different platform out here. Now we're super excited to kind of show you guys a lot of different things. The whole, the reason that this whole process got started is because I was messaging um, the boat center down here. I was like, hey, I need a crappy boat. I want to do this project. I was talking about it all year last year with Mitch. I want to do this project where you kind of film out of, uh, you know, a much less expensive type of boat and fish some smaller water and kind of show some of that kind of stuff. And it eventually turned into like, hey, what do you think of this boat? And the second I saw it, I was like, that's gonna be a cool rig to catch walleyes out of. And that it absolutely is. If you guys have any questions about this style of boat, this XL, let me know down below. Super cool setup. We're gonna kinda of let the boat do the talking for it for the most part. And we're gonna take this thing all over on a bunch of little lakes, bunch of little rivers, and kinda of film like a small boat series this year. Um, Mitch got some B-roll the outside, full aluminum trailer. So if we're going through all the salt and everything we're gonna go through in the next couple months here, basically winter right now, it's gonna be super awesome. Get in this boat, spray it all out, and you're good to go again the next day. So a lot of cool stuff in here. Mitch is in love with this thing immediately. He's like, I want this thing next. But I mean, I don't really know if there's a whole lot else to say, Mitchell, other so. than kind of what we got going on here. He did say, Jason said this boat, We'll go close to 50 miles an hour too. <laughs> which is that what he is, said? Yeah, which is crazy. Which is crazy. So we got the Yamaha on here, four stroke, 50 horsepower. And this thing's absolutely gonna fly. Big flotation on the back for running all this skinny water. I mean, this is not your average Dombo. This is a very tough boat. And uh, it's laid out a lot more for like serious utility loose yeah, than it is just kind of like your average Jumbo. Look at this rough texture too. 
yeah, it's all kind of texturized, no slip type stuff. And uh, you can call it a cryptic camo, you can call it whatever you want, but this is, if you guys want to kind of take a look at this exact model, it's the XL F4. I think the boat's like 17 and a quarter feet long or something like that. So as per usual, the boat center did a phenomenal job rigging this thing. But what we're actually gonna do is hook it up to the truck rental. Go find some walleyes in some kind of little tiny river somewhere. So that's kind of the plan. I'm excited. We're kicking off the season right, picking up a boat, putting it in the water and catching a fish. Breathe it in you guys. This is the first trip of the year in a boat. Beautiful day, but I do believe at some point there's a potential for some weather coming in. I don't know, we'll see what happens, but we are in the John boat and it feels so good. Graphs are working, graphs are functioning. We've got the rods in here, tackle in here. We got Mitchell even in here holding the camera, which is gonna be awesome today. Goal for today, real simple. I've only been to this stretch of river one time ever before and it was kind of tough, um, but the goal for today we could have gone other places and caught bigger fish or caught more fish, but we kind of wanted to start out running some small water in the small water John boat. So um, the goal for today is we literally just want to catch some walleyes. This is basically winter walleye fishing, right? There's no spring or run that started. We got water temps that are very cold still. So this is not any means like peak, peak season, right? But if we can just figure out how to put a few fish in the boat today, that's gonna be a good day in my boat. And if a few of those fish are some decent ones, even better, and we wanna take you guys along for the ride and christen the old John boat. What do you think, Mitchell? Are you jacked up? I mean, it's day one, baby. <sighs> no more drilling holes, no more snowmobiling and we're jigging vertically. Right there, Mitchell. Number one. Could actually be a decent fish too. I mean, we're like five casts in right now. I just made a bomb cast back in this little current seam. It's always, it's always, you never really know though. When you're catching fish in these rivers early season, you're like, oh, it's a big one, it's a big one. And you remembered you haven't caught a fish on a rod and a reel in like six months, so. Oh, it's a fish and a stick is what's going on here, Mitchell. I think so. Oh no, it is just a nice walleye. There we go, baby. Look at that, dude. First one of the season. Are you kidding me about five casts in? I think this is a pretty decent fish for down here too. I mean, they get bigger, but come here, buddy. No, we're just gonna lean right over the old river runner here. Look at this guy. He's just gonna let me come in and just grab him. Look at that. First thing in the morning, baby. Beautiful walleye on the little old tickle tail swim bait right there. How does it get any better than that? Do you want more sun cameraman? What do you think? That's a nice fish. Nice, healthy one, dude. Probably 19 incher, stocky, fat, golden. I'm digging this. Are you digging it? Should you let him go and do it again? I was literally like in La La Land, like we're having some mic difficulties. I don't even know how this audio is going to be, but we just bought some fancy man new filming setup. And I was just kind of limp wristing it back there and boom, all of a sudden he bites. There we go. Let's do that some more, dude. First fish in the old John, dude. I like it. This is going to be fun. We're going to have some fun doing this. Right there. We are on. I don't know, Mitchell. Decent walleye. Decent walleye. We're just on the 15, 15, 16 inch variety. Everybody, let's give you a flip. There we go. Oh, it warms the dang soul, I'll tell you what. You guys are probably looking at these like, you know, those aren't giants. And no, they're not, man. But we're catching 14. 15, 16 inch wall, I say. That first one was probably bigger though. He was probably 18, 19 inch or, But I mean, beautiful little guys, man. In the river. And in my mind, this is how every season's supposed to start. When you're on some little river somewhere and it's cold out and you're just trying to try to piece those first few fish of the year together. And there we go. 
beauties, man. I absolutely love these little river systems like this. And they're all kind of unique, a little bit different, and a lot of fun. Fun way to start the season off. Cameraman's gonna be mad because I didn't get him a slow cinematic release on that one, but you know. Lean it over the side. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the water. Camera, so I don't want that. And basically all we're doing, there's actually some fishes just right here below us. You can see on the live, probably shad or something right down by the bottom there. But we're basically just getting in some of these spots that look good, keeping the bait real vertical and just drifting down them real slow. And generally what you'll see happen is we'll get in an area that we'll find some decent fish or those fish will kind of slide to the bank as that surface just kind of warms up later in the day. And then a lot of times you get into a real good, like shallow pitching bite a lot of times is what I've noticed anyways, but we'll see. We'll take whatever comes our way right now. Feels awfully dang good though to not be standing on the ice drilling a hole. Doesn't it? Oh, feels incredible. Yeah. Right there, fish on. Come on, bud. Felt good. I don't know if it's gonna be good or not. He's doing some stuff. What do we got? Oh, that's another walleye. Another walleye. Not giant. Smallest one yet today. But it was. He did thump it, and it did feel righteous. Baby walleye. See you later, bud. We got bigger fish to fry. Hopefully today. We're getting it done. We're setting the hook. First three hook sets of the year. Feeling fantastic so far. New boat performing flawlessly. Mitchell, how's your day going? Beautiful. Is it exciting as it is for me behind the lens or no? Yeah. That's good. Well, well, shooting everything. <laughs> Do it again. All right, guys, it is our mandated 30 minute lunch break right now. All cameraman's mandated 30 minute lunch break. And uh, this is one thing which I've been late to the party to, the old jet boil. And this is like the, the exact day I wanted to experience down here. Catch a few walleyes, break in the rig, and eat a piping hot cup of soup or stew out here. And if you guys don't have a jet boil, they're relatively inexpensive. I mean like a hundred bucks. You can buy like all the specialty like dehydrated meals for it. Or you can just literally like plop a bunch of like soup or stew stuff like this in here. And in basically like two or three minutes you have like piping hot cup of stew soup and or chili. So I was late to the bandwagon on the jet boil, but it is uh, definitely an enjoyable um, break, I guess in the middle of the day. I could even cook you up my grandma's famous rigatoni in this. Could. Yeah, it's a type of noodle, Mitchell. I'm not, what? It's a type of noodle. I'm not freaking stupid. Fishy, Mitchell. We are on. It's feeling probably about similar sized, I'd say. So that, sometimes you get them on the in the current, oh yeah, he's about that same kind of 14 inch size here. Sometimes you get them in the current, they feel like they're about three, four pounds right away on the live bait. And they're definitely not super aggressive. And this is something you see a lot just when the water is very, very cold. This kind of super early season time frame. But hey, we're getting a few. If we had like a bunch of sun, I'll bet it'd be a little bit better and those fish would be popping plastics a little more. The only, or this evening, it's potential we could get a bunch of fish on plastics again. But for right now, it does seem like they prefer that live bait option. See you later, little homie. Back into your little current seam you go. No saugers yet. There are saugers in this system, but we have not encountered one yet. Which, if we're just staying on the walleye train, that's fine with me, I guess. A little quarter ounce jig. That one's the Pendu or a Google app, works good too. 
and just a little minnow action. And that's pretty much all we're doing. And just kind of slipping the old current seams. A pattern as old as time, Mitchell. I feel like out here on the river, we're just blending right in with the locals and our little river rig. Feels good. Back for more. They look good back there. Got him. Well, it did look good back there. <laughs> Literally just came through this area with the side imaging on. And I was like, oh yeah, there's a couple fish back there. There's so many rough fish in a lot of these rivers that a lot of times if you're seeing stuff, if you you can almost look at the graph here. <clears throat> we will when we're done catching this fish. Long ways back there, but tons of rough fish in the real slack water right by shore. This one popped it just like a walleye, so I have no doubt what this is going to be. But then out in a little bit more current, oh yeah, it's a nicer walleye. Out in a little bit more current is where it looked like there was a few little bit more walleye-ish marks. It's probably a 16 or a Mitchell. He's a little better one than the last couple, I'd say. On the old tickle shad right there. Both were nicer fish today, can on the plastic. And that is overall kind of a common theme. Nice, healthy, fat, perky, 15, 16 year man in the river. Pretty little guys, huh? He's kind of like all colored up. Yeah, Almost got like good. sauger stripes on him. Okay. He's a beauty. We'll take him like that, man. That in is the snow. In the snow. Yeah. We, we've experienced every season today. Sunny, warm when we came out. Ate lunch. Wind's picking up. It's getting snowy. Could be some potential rain, but for now it's cold enough to be snow. It is your classic early day on the river <laughs> in February. We'll take him because this is basically all bonus time right now. That is a beautiful one right there. He wanted to eat the old plastic. See you later, buddy. Here, I'll turn the boat this way, Mitchell, and you guys will see all these all these rough fish sitting in the slack water. They're going to come off my right side here if Mitchell looks at the graph in a second. Right here, you're going to start seeing them over there. You see all that little pitter-patter off the right side? Anytime you get in real slack water in these rivers, that's where all the junk rough fish hold. And most of the time... Where you quit seeing the junk fish is where you got a little bit more current and those walleyes like to sit not in the raging current not in the really slow current but right in that intermixed little spot right there and that's right where that one came from got him mitchy all right, just caught that last one in the snowstorm. Oh, we got our first sauger, Mitchell. Our first sauger of the day. <laughs> yeah, it was not though. This one is for sure sauger. Moved out a little deeper, which a lot of times is where you find these guys. We're in 20 feet right now. Most of the other fish today, eight to 13, I'd say. Little 15, 14 and a half inch sauger. Pretty little guys out of the river, man. Fish. Working the bait so slow. I mean, if you're doing a cast that takes about five minutes, you're doing it right. <laughs> Bouncing back and forth between the plastic and the jig and the minnow. And I mean, just kind of waiting that bait jig size to the current. Just whatever gives me the most hover, just so I can just crawl that thing and just. There's a lot of times where I'll pop that bait up and just hold it for like 10, 12 seconds, and then the bite happens. You know, they're just sitting there looking at it the whole time, and they just want it just creeping and crawling real slow. All right, guys, I want to talk real quick just about kind of our, our setup for this kind of fishing. So it's basically winter walleye fishing, right? And the whole thing revolves around essentially moving baits very slowly. We're kind of going around current seam to current seam, but basically there's two baits we're catching fish on. One, jig, and minnow. 
And this one, the rod is frozen now. This one, holy cow, we just got, you know, it's just, this is winter walleye fishing pretty much. Quarter ounce, pendu jig, fat head on there, something of that nature. The whole key is really weighting it to a lot of times the speed of the current. Now you're not fishing in the fastest current, you're fishing in, you're not fishing in the slowest current. So a lot of times if you're pitching that bait out and you're just like not touching bottom at all, obviously way too light. So a lot of times we're just letting the bottom and just, I mean, dragging that rod forward and just, I mean, holding it there, holding it there, holding it there. Okay, hits bottom. I'll just kind of do the same thing again, real slow. These fish are very, very just kind of coming up. You can imagine they're sitting in that current like that right there. This is gonna be just a little walleye here, but they're sitting in that current and just sitting there and that jig, they just kind of see it hovering around in their face and they'll just come up and barely kiss it. Baby walleye right there. I'll let him go. Same thing with the jig and the plastic. Now the whole key to a plastic when you're trying to fish it this slow, if you're fishing a big janky plastic that you gotta impart a lot of action on it to get the bait to move, not gonna be a good bait. So you want something that could just hang there and kind of that light current and just move around. And this is the Kalen's Tickle Shad. If you're a Spring River walleye guy, get some of these tickle shads in the 2.8 and the 3.8 they're honestly one of the best kind of very cold water river swim baits and even if mitch just i don't even know if this is going to show up or not as i kind of just slowly drag this thing by you can see that tail is just kind of always swimming and kicking and moving and the bait has just a ton of action at a really slow speed so we'll pitch this way back behind us here let it get down to bottom we're fishing quarter ounce heads that's kind of the right jig head weight for kind of this intermediate current in this river let it hit bottom and all i'm doing is just same thing dragging it and a lot of times you'll get that bite when you swing that bait forward it's just wafting there in the current Dunk, you'll get that classic kind of tick bite on there sometimes it seems like we can get them on plastics sometimes it seems like you know you got to kind of go to live bait to kind of get some of those real slow ones to go but that's kind of the spring setup on these rivers. You could take this setup, go to any river you're gonna fish and catch fish doing it. The key is current's coming this way. We're in a current seam, casting backwards, dragging back into the current. That is super key in really cold water. Now, as the water gets slowly warms up, a lot of times you can get a little bit more aggressive and do some different things, kind of casting across current and things of that nature. But the whole key is very slow. Let the current just kind of manipulate your bait, get real lofty and just kind of slowly retrieve that bait back to the boat. And don't be afraid if your cast takes like five minutes. <sighs> Rolling. All right, folks. All right, folks, Pretty that's cold. gonna be a day for today. Hopefully the camera doesn't fog. fog. Yeah. All right, guys, well, started the day off. Beautiful, catching some walleyes, and uh, it slowly kind of got gloomier and colder. It says it's 26 degrees out not right now. I don't know if I believe that. Feels like it's about 32 degrees out, but um, caught some walleyes today. Goal achieved. We put walleyes in the new John boat, and the boat actually, it's a lot more of a boat than I would say a John boat. I bet in a lot of John boats, I feel like a tin pop can. This one does not have that feel to it. It feels a lot more like you're in a very solid kind of fishing boat. And it's perfect for fishing these little rivers like that. That's kind of why we want to start it here. Caught some walleyes, put some fish in it. We're, I think, on to somewhere else tomorrow. We also got to figure out a camera solution because we went through 16 AA batteries today <laughs> filming in our new audio equipment. So we might have to figure out a solution so we don't go broke buying double A. But appreciate you guys watching this one. Obviously the first of many. Don't worry, the fish will get a lot bigger this year. But uh, appreciate you guys watching this one. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you guys next time. Perfect. Over and out.